My name is Edward Winters. I'm the executive director of Oregon Agricultural Food and Rural Consortium. My wife, Margaret Llewellyn, she is the CEO of Natural Good Medicines, and we deal in industrial hemp products. So we were talking about how the water issue has come up in Oregon with respect to hemp. Yes, well, what, um, we got invited to a wine association's meeting to talk about industrial hemp because the wine association, the wine growers, um, have, have uh, um, they have a lot of land that they can't grow their grapes on. So they're wanting to know if they can grow industrial hemp on this, and they were asking us about water usage. So we started talking about water usage when uh, this gentleman spoke up in the back and was saying that this week in Oregon we have medical marijuana, and being that medical marijuana is not considered a crop or, or, or any of that, they don't necessarily have to get water permission to get the water out of the creek. Or the river, the what was the Apple, Apple, Applegate, Apple, Applegate River? Was the Applegate River. So what they did though is though they drained all of his water. So this guy, he raises organic beef. He had water, mm -hmm. and he didn't get his water because the creek went dry. And there was just no water. There's not enough water. Now we have Nestle, who's come into our state. Right. He's actually purchased rights out of the Columbia River Gorge, which is up in northern uh, northern Oregon. And they're trying to come down to the Rogue River. Because the Rogue River is just, it's a clean, beautiful river. And that's, they want the water off of that too. We're trying to keep them from coming in and doing that. We need our own water. Our farmers are not getting water. You drive down I-5 going into California and you see the signs on the side of the road. And they say, I paid for 100% of my water and I only got 25%. So our farmers are not getting their water. So, so how you know generally we've been hearing a lot about hemp as a preferred crop compared to a lot of more water consuming crops but as far as water rights are concerned so is would industrial hemp have to get the same water rights that you still have to get yeah. water rights yeah yes. any cannabis yeah. quality yeah. Water yeah. Water. Yeah. now they have to do the water rights especially if it's an industrial crop which is what we plan on industrial hemp being is an industrial crop right. so they will have to get water rights you cannot use your well just mm. because it's on your property you actually have to have water rights in the state of oregon uh, the state owns all water rights right, right. so right. they dictate on what we do and do not do with the water mm. yeah now with I, hemp, it's only takes 25 percent less water than corn so it's better to to grow an industrial hemp crop other compared to corn and soybean and because they use a whole lot more water. And you can get the same nutrition product out of the hemp plant that you can out of the soil. You can yeah. still do ethanol, you can make biofuels, you can uh, make any of the oils out of it because you can squeeze those seeds for oils. There's fiber, clothing, there's nothing on that plant you can't use, there's, there's no waste. And using less water is a good idea. And it, and it grows just fine anyway. I mean, I, I did my research at Colorado State on uh, Lower South Platte, and there was a lot of talk about with the center pivot from the wells, mm -hmm. and then you end up with these little corner sections um, uh, that, that didn't have any crops on. So um, is that an area where people are looking at, at staking some hemp crops at the corners yeah, of center cover pivots? Crop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cover crop as well. Yeah. It, there's just certain things that don't grow well in certain areas or certain soils. But one thing him does, it grows. It grows in almost any kind of condition. But like what the tree give it hot water, it will grow. It's amazing. You know, it's an amazing. Yeah, it doesn't require a whole lot of water. No, yeah, it's yeah. a whole lot of work. You know, you water it and you go through your field, you know, every three weeks. You know, that's what you do. It's, it just grows. It, it takes water in the beginning, but as it gets bigger, it doesn't really use it. Mm -hmm. And we notice that with the, you also have to be careful with your water rights as well, because some of them is like flood irrigation. Mm -hmm. You can't spray, you can't, you know, do it All right, so we'll or, catch up. or run water down, you actually have to flood your Or circle crop, like you just mentioned. Crop, yeah. Right, right, right. Can't do that. No, they don't. And they don't want you growing it in the greenhouse, because they've said that's a sort of nature. Yeah, so it's a yeah. totally different thing. Well, where we live, we're going to grow industrial in eastern Oregon would be perfect for it. But we would have to start them in greenhouses first and then put them Early in, in the floods. season, right. yeah, well, it's too cold. The farmer would have to yeah. use commodity yeah. crop, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what about for habitat? Is it, um, what kind of species like flying around and, and crawling around hemp in, fields? In field, oh, pests? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, not pests, but in terms of uh, wildlife. Oh, wildlife, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, 
our small infield and we went out there and there's some seeds in the, in the tops and those birds were hanging on. They knew what it was. Yeah. They knew what it was. They, well, they love the it seed. Yeah. It was great. So, so I just looked at get some happy birds. I yeah. did. I looked at those happy <laughs> birds and I said, you know, who needs to fly south of the red tour? Yeah, I'm just gonna hang out here. Was it songbirds or waterfowl or songbirds? And of course, we didn't see the deer grazing through, but they didn't actually eat any of the hemp because I don't think they know what it is yet. Once they start tasting it, deer are kind of dopey already. <laughs> I'm tired. You can get the deer in the headlights. Look there, yes. Yeah, so nice. So, well, how how's it been for you guys? How many, have you guys been to Congress before? We do a lot of work with citizens coming to Congress no, first time. We've been hearing about it a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, so what have you guys done as far as? I mean, you had the expo here in one of the congressional buildings, in the Rayburn Building. Um, have you had member visits? Did you go to your own members, members of committees, who, who well, are staff? We, are, we have some setups uh, tomorrow in Senator Wyden's office and also Luminators. So we'll be visiting with them tomorrow before we uh, talking about industrial mill, how Oregon can improve our program. To see how we can work with each other. And, yeah. and so when they have an issue or a need, you know, we can see what we can do. You know, See, in do. Oregon, we have all cannabis. It's, it's all legal. Recreational, medical, and industrial hemp. So all the cannabis are legal and represented in our state. So we're having to coexist, and we're trying to prove how we can coexist. Right now, people think that hemp and marijuana cannot coexist with one another. But it can if you, if you do good farming practices. And that's what we do. With our educational services network, we teach people on the viability of industrial hemp and how it can improve your existence for a healthier lifestyle. Now, is this being done through cooperative extension with federal funds as far as the, the educational programs? No, yeah. it is done out of our own, own, own companies. Yeah, that's We're, what Natural Good Medicines does. We yeah. sponsor yeah. Oregon Agriculture. Would, would that be allowed, though, would it, to partner with Cooperton or, or universities on education about him? Well, we, we're trying to do that, but right now our our state is not on board, per se, with research mm. and development. So our agricultural department is not really working with us at all. They're they try they, they it, say they, it, they and just, then all of a sudden they say they don't say anything. Yeah. Don't say just say kidding! Psych! Yeah. <laughs> That's what my son <laughs> what, what about, um, like, OSU? OSU is on board, uh, mm. finally, after three years. Finally got on board. I, yeah. I was on that panel to do research at OSU, and we went to the meeting, and uh, all the personnel says, "Well, we can do research on industrial hemp, but you cannot plant one seed in the ground." And I said, "Well, how the heck are you going to do research if you cannot plant the seeds?" And you can't be in a greenhouse either. And you can't be in a greenhouse <laughs> either. Yeah. So you know, we're we're still working through all of our programs in Oregon. We we'll, we'll get it all solved. It'll work itself out. Nice. You just gotta keep at it, keep smiling, be goofy. You know, they can't hold out forever. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is where it's at right now. It's here in Washington DC. Okay, it's not in Oregon anymore. Oregon's already accepted it. Yeah. We've gotta get Washington DC to say, okay, you do it. And then we'll OSU will be there, the agricultural department will be there, we'll have all this USDA will be there. The as soon as the federal funding comes there. through. Yeah. <laughs> We got to take it off the schedule one drug. Yeah, it's not a drug. We have to take industrial hemp off the schedule one drug. This is not. Yeah. We know the difference now. There is actually a DNA difference between the two plants, so we can actually tell the difference. They couldn't in the 70s, and they couldn't in the 30s, but they can now. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. No hemp needs to be in our minds. It needs to be in our minds. Thank you very much.